Jacobs. Welcome to my coronavirus classroom. Today is endocrinology model lab. So to begin, we're gonna zoom in on Alex, my lovely assistant. And if we look in Alex's cranial vault, we can see here is the hypothalamus, which is the master controller of the endocrine system because it controls the master gland, the pituitary, that's sitting down here in the cellatursica of the sphenoid bone. Okay, so what else can we see? At the back of the epithalamus is the pineal gland, which you can see right here. And the pineal gland helps control circadian rhythms. If we come around to the front, we can see in the anterior aspect of the throat here, just anterior to the trachea, is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is made of a bunch of thyroid follicles. The thyroid follicles are made of thyroid follicular cells that respond to TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, by releasing thyroid hormones into the blood. In between those thyroid follicles is where you find your C-cells that release calcitonin when blood calcium levels are high. Uh, this model is lacking a thymus. We have another model I'll look at in a minute that has a thymus. Uh, but if we're looking at uh, just other things to be aware of, important parts of some component of the endocrine system, the lungs here have the angiotensin converting enzyme that's gonna convert angiotensin one to angiotensin two. Here is the liver. The liver responds to growth hormone and releases insulin-like growth factors. So that's a hormonal thing that it does, but it also responds to insulin to do glycogenesis. It responds to gly glucagon to do glycogenolysis, and it does a, a really a lot of other things in the body. In the renin angiotensin system, it's pumping out the renin substrate, which is going to be released uh, all the time, and when blood pressure drops and the kidneys release renin, it will combine with that to become angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 goes to the heart and gets pumped to the lungs with the angiotensin converting enzyme. That goes angiotensin 1, becomes angiotensin 2, goes back into the left side of the heart and goes out to the systemic circuit. Angiotensin 2 is going to stimulate the posterior pituitary to release antidiuretic hormone. And angiotensin II is going to stimulate the zona glomerulosa, actually the outermost layer of the adrenal cortex, to release aldosterone. Aldosterone will target the kidneys and cause them to reuptake sodium. Chloride ion and water will passively follow. That will help to increase blood volume. So those are the adrenal glands. We'll talk more about the other layers when we look at histology. Uh, this is the pancreas here. It has endocrine and exocrine functions. The endocrine pancreas releases insulin in response to high blood glucose. Insulin helps cells take up that glucose and lower blood glucose in the body. Uh, the pancreas also senses when there is a drop in blood glucose, those are alpha cells that sense that and respond by releasing glucagon, which will stimulate the liver to do glycogenolysis, where we can break down that stored glycogen and release the glucose to the blood. As far as the insulin goes, it's the pancreas, uh, it's the beta cells in the pancreas that are sensing the increase in blood glucose and release, releasing insulin. Uh, as far as other straightforward endocrine glands go, really, uh, they're the gonads. So I'm actually going to come back over here now and look at this model. This model is just our endocrine glands. So up here in the head, we have the hypothalamus, which controls the pituitary, the pineal gland, which controls your circadian rhythms. Here, anterior to the uh, trachea, we have our thyroid. Here we actually show the thymus. So it's very active in kids who are developing their T-cell repertoire. It's on top of the heart. It gets replaced by adipose tissue as a person ages. And then here's our adrenal cortex sitting on top of the kidneys. You can see the outer adrenal cortex. There's an inner adrenal medulla. That's the adrenal gland on top of the kidneys. The pancreas right there. And then our gonads are also adrenal. Uh, um, and then our gonads are also endocrine glands, so the ovaries in the female and the testes in the male. Let's quickly look at each of these models individually. So 
So here is a model of the larynx, and you can see the thyroid kind of sits at the uh, inferior aspect of the larynx and the superior aspect of the trachea, and it's kind of textured this way because each of those things is a thyroid follicle made of those follicular cells. On the posterior aspect of the thyroid, you can find parathyroid glands. So that's that for the thyroid. For, uh, we don't have a good model of the thymus, but for our adrenal glands, they sit on top of the kidneys. That's the outer uh, cortex, glandular cortex, and deep to the cortex is an inner medulla that responds directly to sympathetic nervous system stimulation. Here is the liver, which is going to be able to do a bunch of things. Hormonally, it responds to growth hormone to release insulin-like growth factors. Insulin-like growth factors cause the growth of cartilage and bone and muscle. They do all the extraskeletal um, things and all of the growth parts of growth hormone. Growth hormone on its own is causing changes in uh, glucose availability, but we'll talk you talked, we talked about that at lecture. Uh, this model right here, that is the pancreas. The beta cells sense an increase in blood glucose and release insulin. The alpha cells sense a drop in blood glucose and release glucagon. And then our last endocrine glands are the gonads. So this is Dick and this is Jane. And Dick has testes here that are going to respond to our gonadotropic hormones. FSH will stimulate sperm production. LH will stimulate testosterone production. And here in Jane, we have our ovaries. FSH is gonna stimulate the development of the follicle and nurturing of the oocyte. And LH is gonna stimulate the production of androgens that get converted to estrogens so that estrogen levels go up. Uh, the target for LH are these cells called um, thecal cells. The target in the ovaries for FSH are granulosa cells. The target for FSH in the testes are the Sertoli cells, and the target for LH in the testes are the Leydig cells. So that wraps up our kind of discussion of endocrine models.